My slightly boring video on how I got my Sony Triniton television was a great example of the slow nature in which I make videos. Well, here are two phones that I picked up from my local thrift store about two years ago. On the left we have a Palm 1, a Blackberry-ish phone, released at the end of 2004. The model number is 650. Let's give the screen a quick buff to remove those spots. It has a camera on the back and inserted in the top is an SD card. Interesting design with the pop-out USB part. Moving on to this silver one, it's an HP model iPack. Also in the side, a 1GB SD card. To be honest, these SD cards were the main reason to buy the phones, since small size SD cards can come in handy with those replacement hard drive thingies like SCSI to SD. By the way, I think I paid 2 euros for the both of these. Also below here, a mini SD. The first time I see one of those. Actually never heard of these. This is the first device I see and have with a mini SD capable slot. I have a lot of cheap consumer cameras, none of them have a mini SD slot. Most of them either have compact flash or SD. Or the Sony SD type thing. On the back this one says designed for Windows Mobile. Interesting. Oh and it appears that we are not allowed to chuck it in the bin. I think this one might have been used in an industrial environment since it came with the armored case. Either that or someone with aggression issues has owned this phone before. When I just got them I headed out to AliExpress and for an additional I believe around 6 euros I managed to find the USB charging cables to go with these. This one is for the Palm and this one for the HP. Let's start by seeing if we can turn on the HP. We have a light. Interesting how the display looks on camera. It looks very pixelized. I pressed the power button a couple times, but sadly nothing happened. I tried powering it on without the lithium battery. No result. I think this one is quite dead or might need a replacement battery. Let's move on to the palm. Which immediately when the USB touched the socket turned on. The loading bar moving quite fast. Aha, I can enter the date, so let's enter the current one. I am, as I think everyone is by now, used to touchscreens, so at first I tried with my finger, but of course I need the stylus, although the screen also responds to your finger. It goes up to 2023, no surprise of course, let's save it. And then a world opened up that I did not expect to find. A whole bunch of phone numbers appeared. Moving down showing this. If found, please call. The name, email and other credentials of the previous owner were still saved to the device. Let's test the camera real quick. Take a picture of the iPad. You can change the resolution. Let's record a quick movie. Good moment to test the microphone. Test of how the microphone sounds on this phone. What a beautiful image. You can really see the pixels when you look at the iPad name. Let's replay that video. Test of how the microphone sounds. Then I realized that not only the numbers were saved to the phone, but also a whole bunch of blurry pictures were still on the phone and probably on those SD cards. If you put the SD card in a computer, in this case my Mac, it appears and shows a bunch of files, mainly to do with the navigation system and the pictures and other media. Pretty handy. I have no way to check the mini SD at this moment, so I'm not sure what files are on that, but I'm sure they are quite the same as on the normal SD card. That USB SD card worked pretty nicely, I have to say. Moving on. Also, there were still a lot of text messages on the phone. And all the contacts, a lot of them. I could see what job the previous owner had, where he had been, on holiday, and other stuff. 
On the phone was also a program that introduced the phone and all its features. Well known stuff. Then I clicked top fun features. Which showed about personalization and creating short videos, also caller ID and download ringtones. Then I realized an interesting one. Keep your data safe. It's a good idea to synchronize often so you have a backup. And then, but even if the battery runs out, don't worry, the battery will retain all your info. Well, that's great if you manage to keep on to your phone, but not if it somehow ends up at the thrift store. Quite impressive, though, that the data was stored so well for 17 years. Interesting how when they mention save, they focus on not losing it. This made me wonder when we started using unlocking functions on our phones, and it appears that we started doing that from iOS 5 and Android 2.0 iOS 5 was released in 2011, seven years after his phone. Then I moved on to something that's always interesting, sounds and alerts. Let's check some out. Trio Techno was quite the song, let's keep that one. Of course, also in the navigation app I could see most of the previously visited destinations. I wanted to see if the battery could still operate the phone, which it appeared to do, although of course the phone warns about the very empty battery. When I checked the memo app, I was sort of shocked to find bank details, product keys for various pieces of software and social security numbers, all stored on a not protected device. Was password protection not yet a thing in 2004? I was not even in primary school back then, so I cannot really recall. I had the iPad still plugged in, but still it appears to be as dead as a doornail. I got out my Sony GSM, which still had a weird AliExpress SIM card in it, which someone commented a while back is illegal in some countries. I put it in, it showed it was searching a network, then I dialed the number. Of course, not expecting it would work, but I wanted to see what that would look like. So let this be a lesson to all you kids out there, before you bring your 22 year old phone to a thrift store, remove the SD card and preferably all the data on it, because it might end up on a very small YouTube channel in the future. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed this attempt at looking at someone's personal data and trying to boot this dead iPad, but for now, thanks for watching.